fly in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Let's take a look. It's in a book. Next Gen Retro Man. Next Gen Retro Man. Podcast. Episode 15. I'm Ryan. I'm Adrian. And I'm not Lamar Burton. LeVar. LeVar. Okay. Well, I messed that up. Wow. We can edit that. Yeah, we're not editing that at all. Anyways, <laughs> hey, yeah, we're going to talk about books. Nerd! Yeah, so uh, let's just jump right in to what have you been up to there, Adrian? Uh, I guess we'll get into it a little more later, but I started reading Dune. Uh, good start. Very, very good. Yeah, uh, chapter one. Yes, good, good. Yes, yes. It's a, I've always wanted to read it. I vaguely remember watching a little bit as a kid but not really understanding it and then like growing up like yeah i really want to watch that and then just didn't and then really want to read that and like didn't so like all right here we go gotta get into it now because the movie's coming out later this year uh i got carrie into playing mario odyssey the other day uh that was good that was fun she's she's she liked it she doesn't really play video games but like she she was getting into it yeah it's fantastic yeah i think it's full of charm um, the baby was there watching us, so she was having a good time. Dude, wait till you get to New Donk City. You're going to have so much fun. That's <laughs> such a good level and area. I took a rent it, and they didn't have it at my video store. <laughs> Those bastards. Just buy it, man. Sorry. I... <laughs> okay. Spent all my money on Warhammer. <laughs> that's, that's on you. <laughs> I know it is. And then uh, this past weekend, uh, we went to go watch Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, how was it? It was, it was better than I thought. I think my my thing was like, oh, because the whole what's it called? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the ugly Sonic. I'm trying to like, there you go. The whole controversy. Like, the whole ugly Sonic controversy kind of like put a damper on my expectations. Uh, but like they they redid it, all the artwork and uh, it it looks they, it looks good. You think they did that on purpose? Uh, I don't know. I heard no. a lot of. I heard a lot of rumors, but that would cost a ton of money. Well, I think, like, well, no. I had the to trailer do... was only cut like that. Shots. It was just the trailer. And then they, again, this is me being straight, like, conspiracy theory. like, But, like, they could make it just so bad and then show that to everyone. Everyone flip out and then them fix it and go. Better than you thought? Yeah, like, look how bad it could have been. Yeah, the movie was good. Like, I don't know. I highly doubt that's what happened, but that's what I believe. You stay after the credits? Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to watch it? Should I throw some, some spoilers? Point, don't throw any spoilers out. It's it's still kind of new coming out. I okay. think people. Are I heard gonna... there's an after credits. Is it worth staying for? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I, I'll do if that. If you're, if you're, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, there's not like after after credits. Smash Brothers? Is it Smash Brothers? <laughs> no, it's a. Uh... Uh, it's something a joke. <laughs> something. <laughs> Uh, no, but it's good. Jim Carrey is really good in it. He's he's like classic Ace Ventura Jim Carrey. Uh, there's some there's some good jokes in there. I kind of like chuckled that. Uh, the baby loved it. He was like, oh, a little fast guy. Uh, but yeah, go give it a watch. Okay. Uh, what about you, Jason? What have you been up to? Uh, Warhammer. <laughs> I've been building my minis and painting them. Uh. I also got into Division 2 because it's really, really cheap everywhere right now. It's three bucks for the game, and that game is definitely worth a three buck purchase. Yeah, I, I played it kind of kind of a lot last year. It was your second most played game last year. Yeah, so, yeah um, I don't remember like playing it that much, but, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, like it, it's, it's a good game. It's fun. It has good mechanics solid i just got bored at at some point it's got your typical ubisoft they pull up a mini map you go to those areas you do the missions there you grind your experience you get your loot kind of thing and i like that about ubisoft games i also like ubisoft games usually go on half off after like a month they've been out for like the gold edition yeah uh i had a dream the other night i'm still mad at you because you beat me in a four uh warhammer 40k tournament Wait, who are you mad at? Adrian. Yeah, he beat me in a Warhammer 40k tournament in my dream the other night. Oh. 
Did yeah. I not qualify? <laughs> no, I think you were out in like the second round, Ryan. I had a dream that I knocked Ryan out in the second round. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I beat Jason. Yeah, what army were you using, Adrian? All of them. Just all of them. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was using Chaos Beast, <laughs> actually. And uh, I'm still playing Dragon's Crown. <clears throat> I'm having fun with the Archer character a lot. Yeah, we played last night. It was good. Good times. Yeah. I'm, I beat another level in Kunai. Cool. That's yeah, right. I need to hop back in that. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ryan? What you been up to? Speaking of needing to hop back in Kunai, it's been a few days since I played, but still enjoying it. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Just really enjoying the traversal and all the upgrades, you know. So fluid. Yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah it's like when playing you 2D Titanfall. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very fluid. The controls are very, very tight. Vanquish just got released on uh, PS4 and Xbox One. It got re-released on PC, I think, like last year, the year before or something. But Vanquish is a fan freaking tastic third person shooter and i highly recommend anybody play it that likes third person shooters and it's, it's uh game. made by uh, shinji mikami the guy who did like resident evil 4 and all that it's a very like fast over the top platinum games take on the third person like cover shooter uh one of my favorite like dumb things about it is the character's, like, just a total, like, sarcastic badass, like, dumb, just to to a ridiculous degree. So when you are, like, sliding around, and it, it kind of, that mechanic in third-person cover shooters, when you, like, press the button to, like, go into cover, and your character, like, slides, like, into the cover, like, your suit has these, like, like jetpack things like on your thighs so when you like slide around you literally like are on your knees just sliding through the environment like slamming into cover but when you hit cover he stops and the mask on his suit pops up and he starts smoking a cigarette which is just dumb and i love it (laughs) and but the thing that's cool with that is the enemies are like shooting at you while you're in cover sitting there like smoking a cigarette and like bullets and debris are like chipping off all around you and but when you hit the button to like start shooting or come out of cover he flicks the cigarette butt up in the air and all the like enemies trail and follow that cigarette butt flying in the air that gives you chance to like hop out of the cover and like get some shots off on him or make it to your next Ah, set of personality yeah it's it's such a good game and then uh, the bayonetta got released with it as well and i never played bayonetta so i might Pick that up and finally see what all that is, is on about. Switch. Bayonetta is on Switch. Uh, I don't Vanquish know if they is not. Switch. Not, yeah, no, not yet. Um, I've been watching Clone Wars. I'm on season four now, or I'm on season four now. It's good. It's still it's good. I think Carrie and the baby are going out of town this weekend, so I'm just gonna binge watch Clone Wars. Cool, it's good, and. Back to the grim, dark future of the 41st millennium. I am still just way into Warhammer 40k. Kind of have my idea set for the army I actually want to play with. I'm I'm still working on my uh, Vanguard Space Marines. I need to prime them. I was going to prime them today, but it was real cold and rainy. And it's not a a good condition... uh, that's how you get bubbles. Yeah, for spray painting. So, had to hold off on that, but they are all built and just I'm I'm ready to paint. Like I'm excited for that step. Uh, I've been reading lore. Um, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Farsight Enclave Tau, which uh, is kind of a splinter group off of like the main like Tau culture and civilization. But the thing I like about them is they can get real up close and personal, whereas the main Tau army and their play style is hanging back and firing from afar and kind of controlling the battlefield that way, whereas Farsight Enclave is all about mobility on the battlefield and jumping around and dropping from orbit and 
getting real up close to the enemy's face and, and taking the battle to them. And I'm much more like that style in video games and, and D and D, you know, so, yeah. so that's what I am going to go with them. Plus they have like really cool Titan fall looking mechs. And I, yeah, they're, out. their mechs are cool looking. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's, let's enough all that stuff. How about some news? Yeah, what's, what's going on? News? What's going on? Uh, what's his name? Sean Krasansky? Did I pronounce his last name right? I can never pronounce his last name. It's not. It's <laughs> it's not Japanese, so he can't pronounce it. <laughs> Jim from the office. Jim from the office really wants to be Mr. Fantastic for the MCU. Has he said that? Yeah, he came out and said it. That's been like a huge fan thing for a while. He looks like him, so. Do it yeah. since you pass on him for Captain America. I guess yeah, but like I really hope they make Mister Fantastic a douchebag. He could play. I bet he could play a douchebag. Oh, um, he could definitely play a douchebag. douchebag. Yeah, Jim, later. Jim Hopper's kind of a douchebag. Yeah. So. And who's his wife in real life? Uh, what's her name? Emily Blunt. Yes. She would make her. I think like, she could, she'd be a good, good uh, invisible. Invisible woman. Well, they make the Quiet Place movies. Invisible. Uh, do what? They're, they're really good in the quiet place together, so you know. Yeah. Now that Chris Evans is no longer Captain America, can we have him come back as a Human Torch? <laughs> <laughs> can we get uh, Michael Chiklis to come back as a Thing? No, Michael B. Jordan's <laughs> got to come back as a Human Torch. Uh, we'll have him fight it out. We'll have a Human Torch death match. Well, I mean, like they have a multiverse, you know. Why don't we yeah. not have them both? Yeah, there you go. All right. Just have uh, Chris Evans as the Human Torch show up with Chris Evans as Captain America in the multiverse. Can we have... This is too much. Captain Torch? Captain Torch. I don't know. Dwight Schrute? Uh, Merge all anyways. the universes. This derailed so fast! <laughs> uh, the, Uncharted, the Uncharted movie starts filming in four weeks. All right, cool. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New season of Clone Wars, February 21st. Yeah. I got a. I mean, I, I'm not going to be ready in time. But. Yeah, I need to, I'm on episode two of season one, so I got to <laughs> catch up quick. That's like two days from now. Yeah, from when we're recording this, <clears throat> is probably already going to yeah. be. It's probably going <laughs> to be released on the day that the show's out. So, hey, new episodes of Clone Wars today. Out now. Awesome. Except for that one episode. That one really sucked. I don't know. I don't know. They all look pretty good. So, uh, yeah. did you see uh, Daredevil? I mean, Bat- <laughs> a Batman? Robert Batmanson? I was going to say Pat Robinson. Or <laughs> Pat, Robinson. Robinson. What? <laughs> Pat Robinson. He's Batman now. You didn't get the note? <laughs> I've done that. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, what do you think about that costume? I don't really care. We'll see. It was so little of it, but I mean... Mm-hmm. That's fine. I liked it. It looked like if that's the, the direction they're going in, cool. What kind Whatever. of Batman is this? Like, what kind of I don't know. What theme is this? Isn't it supposed to be like? Um, it looks kind of. Isn't it supposed to be going towards like Batman or Year Zero or whatever? Or, or, we don't know. Wasn't that what Batman, the Frank Miller one? Uh, ah, I don't freaking know. I know so, Catwoman uh, and those, Penguin are in it. There was a lot of red in it, so it kind of reminded me a little of uh, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. No, I mean if that's no. where they're going with it, man, that'd be crazy. But I doubt it. Have Christian Bale show up as freaking Bruce Wayne. Oh, dude, Michael Keaton and Christian Bale. What are you talking? About? And Chris Evans as Batman. It's the Human Torch. <laughs> oh Lord. Um, I mean, sure. I'm looking. For- forward to it i haven't seen like the last two bad three bad i don't know this whole dceu i just don't care about they need to give up on trying to make it a dceu and just make it standalone films they i think that's what they've done with like the joker and this new batman movie this new batman movie yeah but then they're releasing wonder woman 1984 yeah, because the first one was decent or good. I don't know. I never saw it. And they're it. making a second Aquaman. Yeah, because I made money. And yeah, it was good. White chicks love Jason Momoa. 
my dudes love Jason. I'm a... mm-hmm. Speaking mm-hmm. from experience there, Jason? Oh, yeah. <coughs> you want to Momoa so... his Jason? No, I'm okay. Okay. Right. Anyways. Uh, Disney Plus is releasing The Mandalorian and all their stuff in Europe. So... Right. Evan, watch The Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Which, why, I don't know why they're doing it now. Because like, everyone in Europe has either pirated it or has access to the internet. Or they're very confused on. on what these Baby Yoda memes are. Yeah, and not only that, they're releasing it like week to week like they did here in, in the United States. <laughs> so, like, just release the whole thing. Are they finally getting Jeff Goldblum also? Oh, Disney. <laughs> That's an American treasure. You're going to have, like, the world according to David Hasselhoff. <laughs> uh, he's dead, though. What? David Hasselhoff's dead now. No. Oh, my God. I thought he was. No. Is this news? Is this news? Is this late breaking? David I'm Hasselhoff losing. is. Hold not on. Dead. I got to Google this. Google it, but I got. David Hasselhoff's not dead. Uh, hey, they're releasing more games on the Switch on the NES and SNES emulator thing. I'm not excited for these games. I don't even know them. Two of them, uh, one for the NES and one for the SNES, were never released in the U.S. Uh, Pop and Twinby is cool. I've played that on an emulator before. That's a fun game. It's a good uh, top-down shooter. This just in, David Hasselhoff, the Hoff, is not dead. Okay, yeah. good. He's eating hamburgers in his bathroom. He just passed out. <laughs> you gotta poke him, Jason. Don't just, <laughs> just po- yeah. tell him to get out of your Turn bathroom. Turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his vomit. I don't know who's dead and who's not anymore. Uh, in your bathroom? Yeah. Just poke all of them. Adrian, are you excited for March 31st? So you can watch Rise of Skywalker in the comfort of your home? No, but I am excited because... Ugh. The original trilogy is being released on 4K? Yeah, it's just it's the special editions. Uh, no. That fucking no, stupid no. female alien is going to pop up and uh, sing in Jabba's palace. I'm going to punch a hole in my TV. <laughs> no, I'm not excited about this. Whatever. Rogue One we, we've already had the discussion. Yeah, okay, the VH1's yeah. ones are better. Yeah, yeah. Rogue One and 4K. All right. I have a VCR now. No, it, it's a work? I guess. Cool, yeah. For now. Yeah, I think it's in the back of my wife's car. So <laughs> it just popped out like, oh, there it is. I don't know. She told me she had a VCR on the back of her car, <laughs> and I keep forgetting to take it out. They're not releasing Solo. I, I thought it already was in 4K. Oh. oh. I don't know more. I don't know stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. And Final Fantasy VII remake is rumored to be a hundred gigabytes big. Large. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's huge. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. How many discs did they say this first part is? Two discs? Is that the first like double disc for a PlayStation 4 game? No. Yeah. Is it going to be like Red Dead Redemption 2? Episodic? Yes. So the way they're doing the Final Fantasy VII Remake is in chunks. We don't know how many. Um, but this one is only Midgar. Midgar. So... Like, the beginning of the game. The but first supposedly they put in, like, they said there's fifth, over, like, sixth of the game? 100 hours or so. Or you can put, like, like a ton of time into this one. They, added they said a bunch 80 plus stuff. hours for this yeah. one alone. So, and they did show off a uh, cross-dressing cloud in one of the newer trailers. So They released the entire opening cinematic and got me all nostalgic, I'll admit. Yeah, I, I have, like, a weird, complicated history with Final Fantasy VII. Gotta take the like, ribbon off of Eris. Uh, shut up. I love... <laughs> I hate you. I <laughs> loved it, like, when I first, like, played it, and then... I don't know, like, the endgame stuff just bored me. And I loved the Final Fantasy III endgame stuff. Like, I did, like, a lot of that. So... I never played it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. That was good. I would say it's a, it's probably my third favorite Final Fantasy. What's number one? Uh, twelve. What's number two? Three. American three. Okay. Six right. Japanese three. All right, cool. I never played twelve, but six is my favorite. Where are they at now? Like fifteen? 
Uh, yeah, 15 came out. Came out the most recent We're one. assuming 16 is in, like, production. That's um, mm, I don't know if, like, I, they're working on Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think that's the same team who made the other Final Fantasy. I don't think 16's coming no. out for a while. I think... I think they have a dude. There's someone working on something for it somewhere. Uh, no, Whether because they got They're supposed to be working on Chrono Trigger. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Just it's not gonna happen. Just let it die, man. As someone who like loves the Metroid franchise, like <laughs> you know, at some point you gotta <laughs> give up your and dreams wait. and sit and wait. Give up your dreams, man. And just, yeah, at you least know. you got that uh, Federation Force game. See, I never play that. I mean, Prime 4 is announced, but, like, it's in development hell or something. Like, just give up, and then at some point it'll happen. <laughs> you know, whatever. Someday we'll get another Star Fox also. Yeah, they'll release Mother 3 in the in the U.S. Although I do have the fan translation, like, ROM, not ROM, uh, repro cart. So I guess I have That's something. Yeah. I need to play that. Shit. I got like enough far enough into it and I think Ben was born and I got to like really sad parts and like my hormones are all <laughs> weird because of the newfound like parenthood. So I like <laughs> cried and then I was like, I gotta play this and then I never got back to it. So mm. yeah. Alright. Yeah, anything else? Uh last in the news, uh the No Time to Die James Bond movie, Billy Eilish release that single. Moving on. It's good. I like it. Oh, yeah. it's classic. It's not, uh, I think, crazy. It's no Chris Cornell. What did he, which one did he do? Chris Cornell. He did, uh, I don't know. It was good, though. Yeah, it's probably good. All right, books. Hey. Books. You Can't like to read? live with them. Can't live without them. Or is that women? That's women. Is it both? Nah, I could live without books. Let me get a paper cut on your pee hole. Wow. Uh, the, the, what am I doing to the book to deserve that? I don't know. What are you doing to that book? So, Ryan, so let's talk about some books. <laughs> All right. Hey, so this was kind of my <laughs> idea. Uh, was it? Yeah, like two hours ago. <laughs> Someone else said something about I don't know. Yeah, no, it anyways. was my idea. You're oh, welcome. hey. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well. Just anyway, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, hey, this I don't know. I was more excited about this. I, I was excited about this topic. I didn't come up with it. So, anyways. Uh, but yeah, I've read. I'm not like a bookworm, but I I do like a good book. It just my problem is, I don't know what it is about a book that will hook me. Like there's certain books that like I didn't think I would like, and I started reading, and I loved it. And then there's books where I think I'm going to love it. I start reading it and I just don't like it. Like I get bored and never finish it. So my, my favorite book of all time. And this, this was like kind of on the, the, the like most recent time I read it, I realized it was Dune, like such a good book. Like there's so many like messages and things happening and, like allegories and when's the first time you read it when I think when Kelly was pregnant with Ben, so maybe like eight years ago, I had tried to read it a few times and it didn't take, I want to say maybe three times before that I tried reading it and I got a little ways in cause I loved watching the movie with my dad. Like my dad loved that movie. He loves the books and I liked watching that movie with him and I tried reading the book and I couldn't get into it. And I tried reading the book and I don't know, the fourth time was the charm, or third, I don't know, was um, just got into it and finished it and really enjoyed it. And then this most recent time I read it, I, like, just tore through it. Like, I read, like, 50 pages or whatever a night, and it's got, like, <laughs> there's a lot of pages in that book. Like 400-something uh, pages. It, it also depends yeah. on how no. big the, the, the print is and the, the copy I let adrian borrow the one you gave me it's it's kind of thin yeah so it's like super thick it's like 800 pages yeah it's good yeah and it's, it's good like i i i started i'm on chapter one or i'm on chapter well also, midway through chapter two 
a good chunk of that too is like appendices and stuff at the end where it's like oh, okay we've been saying this word and like well, this yeah, is what that means that's the thing too because like i started reading it and like there's a lot of like oh jib yeah. jobber and jibber jobber the, the and flim flams and all sorts of weird words <laughs> the gom jabar is the yeah the, 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 the needle that she puts yeah, on her neck the, yeah the poison needle uh, and then they're talking about the, the Bonet uh, Gesserit and <laughs> just every class and every planet yeah. and every yeah. little idiom or whatever. It's just there's like, like it, it honestly reminds me a lot of Warhammer 40k. Don't you like, say it? No, it does, though. I'm just saying like it it does like in the sense where there's like all these different players at play. This story is really just focused on this one planet but it involves the whole entire universe and the fate of like humanity and the future like all this stuff is just all tied around this one kind of conflict that's small and then just blows up and gets bigger and bigger so i have decided i remember i think last week i talked about what i was going to read next i'm going to read dune messiah which is the sequel like i'm excited to start have you read any other tune books no like i i I started reading Dune Messiah, but it was like right after I finished Dune and I, I needed a little bit of a break in between. So I started doing other stuff, but I'm, I'm ready to go back to it. So uh, for the longest time, though, my favorite book was Brave New World. Really it's good. Yeah, it's just a really good sci-fi dystopian future. Yeah, I like, like that that genre. I, I never... I, I started that one, but I, I didn't finish it. But, uh, you know, kind of, I still like, you know, like 1984 and that kind of stuff. Yeah. 1984 is the best book I didn't enjoy. Like, I loved the book, but I just did not. It was it was hard it. to get through. But I loved, like, the, the like Brave New World in 1984. Like, I don't think so. I can't remember. It's with the guy from Alien. The guy that. Oh, William Hurt. Yes. Um, Not William Hurt. John Hurt. Wait, one of them. The one from Avengers who finds Hulk in the city. Yeah, that's William. No, no, that's John. John, 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 John Hurt. Hurt. William Hurt is the other guy that is in other movies. The alien, the chest burst, the guy that gets his head. His... Yeah, that's that's. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, He's... we're talking about the right guy. All right, yes. yeah. Um, he was the bad guy in V for Vendetta, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, those those books, how long ago they were written and how relevant they are still to this day, like the things that they said were gonna happen, like it's not a one to one. Like The Simpsons. Yeah, it's not like a, a oh, this is exactly what's going on, but like you can see <laughs> kinda totally is. Yeah, like you can see like the the this like like, those things are happening, you know? And in, like, like another sense, like, so, um, like, Brave New World kind of got me into, like, kind of more, like, heady sci-fi, like, stuff that has, like, more substance to it. Because as a, as a kid, like, my three favorite books, and I, I mean, I read these till the covers fell off, were Aliens, Earth Hive, Nightmare Asylum, and The Female War. And it was, like, this trilogy... Uh, and they were fantastic. Like, they're so good. Like, Jason, if you've never read those, you have to read them. They're written by... Uh, I read Earth Hive. Oh, dude, the, they, get, they get so good. Like, Nightmare Asylum and Female War are just super good. They're written by uh, Steve Perry, who wrote Shadows of the Empire. Oh. Huh. So, uh-huh. yeah, they're all three of them are, are just fantastic. But I read those just... I mean, finished it, started it back up. Like, just loved them. They were really good uh, alien stories. They developed on the lore. They didn't change too much. They, and it just was finally like, what if aliens really did come to Earth? And it, um, it was, it was awesome. And like Tales of the Bounty Hunter and some Star Wars books. I didn't read a lot of Star Wars books. But I love Tales of the Bounty Hunter. I still think I have my copy. And I think Tales from Jabba's Palace. I, I liked it more of the, like... I wish I read Tales. more of those Legends books. Like, short story, like, collections. And not, like, the... I think the only, like, um, EU book that I read was, I think, the Truce at 
uh, Bakura, which took place like immediately after Return of the Jedi. I read <laughs> one. I think it was actually. I think it was that one that you just said. What the truce of Bakura? Like right after you Return of the Jedi? Yeah, where the Empire and Rebels like have to work together to fight some alien fleet or something like that. I don't know. It was all right. I think honestly, the fact that it was just all right is what kept me from reading more of them. But the the like tales. Uh, anthology series were really good but so those books and brave new world is kind of what brought me into like loving more like cyberpunk and uh some kind of like heavier sci-fi stuff like uh do androids dream of electric sheep which is what blade runner is blaze uh, blade runner is based off of that book is so good philip k dick i love a lot of Philip K. Dick. Basically, if it's a really trippy sci-fi movie, Philip K. Dick had something to do with it, probably. Um, Total Recall. Um, I don't know. Minority Report. Oh, uh, I like that movie. The Scanner Darkly. I never saw that. Um, I saw that one. There's, I mean, like, honestly, I can't even think of them all, but, like, he... he his stories were adapted into so many different things. Um, the man of the high castle oh, that's yeah. shown Amazon, that's based off of Philip K. Dick, who was a, he was a fantastic writer. He got a little crazy, like a pink beam would like beam down into his head and like gave him all this knowledge. And he started having these like paranoid schizophrenic like episodes and kind of lost his mind. I can't remember what book it was. I was reading of his, uh, maybe Lies Incorporated. I, I can't remember, but it was about like a guy where they, this guy who didn't believe that the government and this, these corporations were like taking people off world, like to these fantastic, wonderful, beautiful colonies. But when the people left, you never heard from them ever again. So he like snuck aboard one of the ships and like made it to the place where they, I guess, went. And just from there, like, couldn't tell if he was really in that place or if he was like in a simulation or if he was imagining it. And then at some point he had shot with some psychedelic like dart in the neck and he starts tripping and just talking about like mollusks and all this crazy shit. And I was like, I don't even know what's going on anymore. So I stopped reading it. Well, there's like a movie kind of like with uh, Ewan McGregor and someone else. Uh, I don't know. It's like some utopia and like you're chosen, you go to some other world and then like they're actually, it's like, Oregon harvesting or something. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they based it all. Like I said, Philip K. Dick and like high concept sci-fi, like in Hollywood, are just like. But, uh, and from, uh, Blade Runner or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is the like original title of the book. Uh, I got into Neuromancer, and William Gibson, who is a fantastic author. He wrote the original screenplay for Alien 3, and they just adapted it into a... Is that the Wooden Planet one? No, it was the one that, before that, where it was um, more based around, like, I think, Hicks, and not so much Ripley. And it it was more of, like, um, like, kind of a cyberpunk type of, like, dystopia type thing where the the alien was kind of secondary or what I don't I'm not sure. I need to read the the graphic novel comic book series or whatever they base off of it. Okay. And from Neuromancer I got into Snow Crash and Neil Stevenson and Snow Crash is fantastic. Like I try to tell people to read that book so much and like um I honestly think Carrie would really like it because there's a point in the book where it does start dealing with uh, linguistics and speech and like speech and words and sounds as code and like binary. And they're using like speech and certain things to like hack into people's brains, like just by like talking and like using certain tones. It's, and it gets like real crazy and uh, both Neuromancer and Snow Crash deal with the internet really before the internet. Like, it talks about, like, this shared computer network that people load avatars and all this stuff into and hack and, and do all these things, but it was really around before those concepts were a main, like, thing. And, like, before Neuromancer. Lawnmower Man. 
Yeah. <laughs> Neuromancer's a like so much like of the Matrix and that stuff was taken from that. Not taken, but like definitely a big inspiration Influence. too. Yeah. And then like just I mean, I, I can just start rattling off like the Hobbit Lord of the Rings, like my dad was super into those books and, and got me to I remember I yeah. read The Hobbit in fifth grade. <laughs> I was like, What the fuck was all this about? I don't even I don't remember any of it, and I read it again later on when I was older, and I was like, oh, this is really good. Uh, but I'm never really into fantasy. Like, I never got into fantasy books all that much. Like, it was much more sci-fi for me. Uh, American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis is okay. a very difficult book to read along the lines of uh, A Clockwork Orange, which uh, is, like, a fantastic movie. I have, I have that book. But the book is it's hard to read. Uh, because of the subject matter and just the way it's written. But American Psycho is hard to read because it's brutal and disgusting and depraved. And he's like way worse in the book. Than oh, the... dude, it's fucked up. Like some of like, there's a part in that book that like, I, I like literally like put the bookmark in it and shut it. And like, was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm coming back to this later. I can't like, this is, and this was like, in the heyday of my like death metal, like gore metal was like my my shit, and like I was all into that. And even that, I was like, dude, that's really fucked up. <laughs> but the thing with that that's hard or, or, or weird about that book, and also brilliant, is one chapter will be about like literally a whole chapter about his like face wash routine and like all the skincare products he use, and then the next chapter will be about like a tape cassette, like his favorite music. And it's like some 80s new wave artist and he's gushing about and then the next chapter is him like nailing a girl to the like to his floor and like cutting her up and like, you know, just bathing in her blood and all this shit. And then the next chapter is like, you know, I went to the store the next day and they were out of like my favorite aftershave. But it's OK because I found this really not like expensive shirt and it just. Switches between that stuff and it's hard to get Time a to kill someone feel, again. Yeah. But it, it's 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 a fantastic book, but it is a weird and hard read. I loved serial killer like biographies, mainly by a guy named uh, Harold Schechter, who's a fantastic writer. Uh, he did a book called Deviant, which is about Ed Gein. You know who Ed Gein is? No. Ed Gein is the basis for, like, Leatherface and Hannibal Lecter. Oh. Um, Hannibal Lecter in the sense where, like... He ate people. I mean, Ed, no one's really sure if Ed Gein did or not. And Leatherface in the sense that, like, he made a suit out of, like, Ugh. skin. But he didn't really, like, kill people. He dug up graves, the old women that reminded him of his mom. Oh, was really fucked up. Anyways, <laughs> uh, like that, um, Albert Fish. You know Albert? Albert Fish? Anybody? Another no. Yes. The yeah, Albert Fish was awful. Like, super sexual, serial sadist, like, and masochist. Like, this would be really gruesome, so you skip ahead real quick, but like, <laughs> he would take like rose stems and like shove them in his pee hole and pull them out. Wow. And when they took, when they took an x-ray of him, like, but did he take the thorns off first? No. Oh, was, was, that's what he was missing. He was a masochist. You got to take the thorns off. first. Um, Jokes but, on him. That's what the paper's for. He would shove uh, sewing needles in his like perineum or taint. If that's what you want to call it. Gooch, what I don't know, whatever you call it. To each uh, when they took a they took an <laughs> X-ray of his like crotch yeah. like region when he was like in prison, and there's all these crazy needles just all over <clears throat> like inside his, between his legs. It's insane, and he wrote right. one of the most disgusting and depraved things I've ever read. He wrote a letter to like like because he preyed on like children and like would eat them and torture them and so was, he was insane and awful, horrible. Uh, he wrote a letter to like one of the girl's parents, just kind of describing what he did. It's awful. It's a horrible thing. This is not like reading Rainbow at all. <laughs> Why did we sing that song at the beginning of this? And then because we're talking about books. Take a look. It's in a book. It's. I mean, you know. Anyway. Uh, and then Fiend uh, was the other one I read of his. Is by uh, like the youngest serial killer. His name was like Jesse Pomeroy, and he like murdered other like young kids, and he was like 
a young kid. Like it was like, like Michael Myers. Kinda, but like Yeah, baby. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um uh. he they like put him in like solitary confinement for like his whole life. So he was like batshit insane by the end of it. Like trying to escape and just, you know I I, I don't know. But yeah, I loved like those books and like I had an A to Z encyclopedia of serial killers, which I remember my mom like saying, Give me some money to like buy a book. And, and that's what I bought and came home with it. And she was like, That's not what I meant. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> um and then like those kind of books led me to read this book called Messiah by a guy named Boris Starling, which is like a it's about just like a serial killer, serial murderer and detective that like hunts him down. And the sequel was called Storm, which is like the same detective from the first book, and it follows like a new killer and stuff. And then like H.P. Lovecraft is pretty cool sometimes, like I was saying last week or a few weeks ago. He's not like, racist. I mean, he's always a little racist, but I mean, like it's not as blatantly obvious. <laughs> he, the thing is, is like he was afraid of everything, so he was afraid of people that were different than him. Yeah. So like that really ties into right. I'm not trying to like apologize. Let me on opium too. Excuses. But, like, that's why his stories are so good and, like, actually kind of creepy and terrifying is because, like, he's legitimately afraid of what he's writing about and comes across in his books. So those are, like, a lot of the books that I was into kind of once I was, like, a little bit more, like, well-read after, you know, growing up with certain books. So You didn't read the one about the serial killers as a child is what you're saying. No, no, I didn't. I was still in high school though, so like my, like all a bunch of kids in my class thought I was weird because I'm, you know, reading a book <laughs> about like Ed Gein. I still think like, you're weird though. Yeah, I mean, I kind of am. <laughs> I still think it's fascinating, but like, it's it's like those people who watch uh like those true crime TV shows. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. I I like you that just read about it. Yeah, and it's like super popular now, like true crime and true podcasts crime is like yeah. I love last podcast on the left. And they talk about that from time to time is that true crime has never not been popular. Like it used to be way more sensationalized and like exploited than it is now. Yeah. It's, it's freaking unsolved mysteries. Yeah. Even before that forties, thirties, twenties, like the newspapers wrote about all that stuff. Dude, 1-800-873, no, eight, seven, six, five, three, five, three. The hell's that? That's the number for unsolved mysteries. How do you have that memorized? I don't know. I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries <laughs> all the time. Uh, I, Unsolved Mysteries? Yeah, man. That, Let's just call that right that now. Used to see if it's still working. It's out of me. Like, just I the loved, music alone. I loved that show, but it scared me so many times. Isn't it Robert Stack? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. He was really good in Beavis and Butthead to America, by the way. And <laughs> Airplane. Plane. God damn that movie. Hey, going back to an episode we did before, Airplane really fucking holds up. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> so good. Like Comedy you, show. I just I was laughing at like every single like before the jokes came up. Probably like, the only good like spoof one that held up. Oh, dude, no, Naked Gun is kicking. Oh ass yeah, too, yeah, man. yeah. Except O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, speaking of murders. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so like growing up, I loved Hank the Cow Dog. Did you read Hank the Cow Dog? Hank the Cow Dog. Hank, that, yeah. I don't know what that is. Really? Google Hank <laughs> the Cow this, Dog. Like, dude, it was like this little like. This guy Hank that killed a cow and a dog and sewed them together. <laughs> no, Hank, Hank the Cow Dog was a like ranch like hand dog that thought he was like the head of security on this like farmer's land, and there's like a dog named Jasper that was like a sidekick, the and he thought he was just like Hank the Cow Dog. Yeah, his his um like he thought he was just like the super badass, and he was really just like the stupid dumb dog, but like had still like a good heart and. You know, meant hey, well. This is a this is a big book series. Yeah, dude, Hang the Cow Dog is kick ass, man. <laughs> like a your kids will love it. Like it's so good. Um, and then my other story that I really liked when I was younger is called The Whipping Boy. Don't really know why I loved that one so much, but I did. <laughs> um, it's about like a little like prince that was kind of a spoiled piece of shit, and he was awful. But you couldn't whip the prince, so there was a kid name like that was like his whipping boy. That when he misbehaved, they whipped this kid, like spanked him instead. Uh, and then they like 
kind of go on this adventure together and <laughs> blah blah blah. What? Yeah, it's 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 a good story. All right. <laughs> I don't know. And then um, he's being a bad again. Whip me. <laughs> no, he didn't want to get whipped. Oh, okay. But why, why would you go on an adventure with him? Because they like because it's the story. Like they weren't like friends. Like they like circumstances all right. happened that made them like have to be allies. And then there was these like two thieves or something that were trying <laughs> to kill them. And you know, blah blah blah. They know. just go off together. Yeah. If I was the whipping boy, I'd just whip the shit out of that prince then. Uh, anyways, they read the book. It's good. Oh. Like you finish it in like twenty minutes. <laughs> um, eh, maybe long. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I loved man and uh, goosebumps, dude. Oh yeah, goosebumps, oh, dude. I Did used you to collect them every single month whenever a new one would come out. My brother pretty was. much. I did. My brother I had did. all of them, so I'd read them all. Yeah, dude. I love like Monster Blood. Man. Yeah, and the Mass the, Mutant, the Ventriloquist Dummy one. Yeah. Slappy. Yeah. Uh, I remember the one with the Halloween mask that wouldn't come off. Um, mask? Yeah. That, that, that was one. the first episode <laughs> of the TV show. <laughs> was that the first book? Uh, House on Haunted Hill was, or House on whatever it was. The Haunted House one was the first book. Okay. Uh, I remember the one where, like, the kid found out, like, all, like, the librarian was, like, an alien or something. Mm-hmm. And, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so there's so the thing underneath that. the sink. What was that one? Like it yeah. came beneath the sink. That was my yeah. favorite. Yeah. They were good, man. They were like well written, like entry yeah. level scary books. Yeah. And from there, like those books led me into uh, the series. It was like only two books at least that I read, and there may be more in the series. It was called Locke, which was about like this kid whose dad was like researching the like Loch Ness monster and they actually like found it and it's this kind of like crazy you know, monster story. And then there was a sequel or just another book in that series where we called Doomstone. And I loved that one. It was about like Stonehenge and this, like, I think I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. Like it was this, like had like a green face and like no nose. And I had like slime pouring yeah, out. I of remember it. the lock book. Yeah. It was really good. It's by, like, uh, I'm looking it up. Paul Zendel or something like yeah, that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those were, yep. I might have Doomstone somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was like, this like murderous like monster that lived around Stonehenge or something and yeah so it's kind of like my section sorry I talked a whole lot but I, <laughs> I, a lot of books like all sections are probably shorter because I guess you don't like murder that much not, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna deep dive into uh, serial, serial killers, killers. With so I like the Mickey Mouse books y'all ready for serial <laughs> killer deathmatch in a few weeks <laughs> uh no I only know like two. Anyways, so I'm going to go over my books now. And they're not nearly as dark as Ryan's books. Um, kind of, I liked Brave New World. Brave New World's probably my top list. The Giver. I really loved that book yeah. in middle school. That was good. And Which one is that one? It's not the, the Giving Tree. Is it? No, The Giver is no. the one where it's the um, boy who's being kind of raised in a controlled society where they take pills on based off of like what skills they're allowed to have, and every like every generation has a giver who gets to take all the pills and have like get to see in color and everything, and then he's like he gets awoken to what life really is. It's kind of one of those stories. They have a movie adaption of it too that wasn't that good. Jeff Bridges? Yeah, he was the only good part of it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the County County Monte Cristo. I love I me mean, a good revenge story. Oh, I, I saw the movie. The movie was pretty good. I liked it. Guy Pierce. Uh, Guy and, Pierce. Guy Pierce and Jesus. What's his? Yeah, Caviezel. Yeah. No, uh, like actually Jesus. <laughs> uh, it was actually Jesus. Uh, to Catch a Mockingbird, I really liked Animal Farm. To, I really to kill, a kill a Mockingbird? To kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> to Catch a Predator? To yeah, to predator. Catch a... You got it, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> My big so, thing, Mockingbird. Sit to down. Kill a Mockingbird, I really like that. Why are you here? here? Why are you here? Would you like some cookies? Tweet, tweet. Mm-hmm. You want some sweet tea? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Uh, Animal Farm, really good, even though it's about World War Two. No. Yeah, Animal it's, Farm is really good. It's uh, Russian... Revolution. It's more about like yeah yeah like Soviet uh like East West Berlin like that kind of but yeah it's, it's, it's like definitely deals czar. with more like yeah Soviet yeah. Union like communism <laughs> like yeah you know there's a four legs to it 
you know, four legs bad, two legs or two legs bad, four legs good or something. And then uh, some know, animals all are animal created equal, but equal some are more equal. equal. Yeah, yeah. But they mm-hmm. made a sequel, People Farm. It's like you know how like well the first <laughs> one's kind of like oh communism is bad, and then there's a sequel to it. I heard it's not as good. It's like oh capitalism's bad. Well, yeah. Right, Capitalism's like the worst form of government except for all the others. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know if that's right, but I that's don't know. someone somewhere. So someone said it. Next gen retro. Me. No. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire books. I read those. I really wanted to watch those or read those. I watched them. Yeah, already. they're really good. Uh, read the books if you like the. Just let everyone know, like that's what Game of Thrones is based off of. Someday we'll get the rest of the books. It's I doubt not finished it. Yet, right? Is it? No, they have two. He has two more books to write, and that's why the last two seasons sucked. They hadn't even written the books yet. Uh, I was really, really big into Stephen King, like in high school. I loved reading all the Stephen King books. Uh, Shining, of course, in my top favorites. I really liked Doctor Sleep after that came out. I'm glad that movie's finally out. I like that movie. And was it a good movie? I, I never it saw was it. good. I liked it. And I recently uh, got done reading The Outsider, the most recent Stephen King book. Or he knocks out like a book every week. The most recent popular Stephen King book. And it's really good. Like, Ryan, I think you would really like The Outsider. Have you ever, like, do you like Stephen King's stuff at all? Uh, I never really got into it. It's like, kind of It's kind of supernatural true crime. That's that's all I can really say without spoiling any oh. else of the book. Are there any but lasers it's... in it? No. I don't know. You'll <laughs> like it. Trust I'll me. read laser books. What about giant turtles? Worms? Uh, yes. There are giant worms in it. Yes. The giant turtles. Isn't, no, actually, aren't all not. his aren't all Anyways. his books like like in one universe? Yeah, they are actually, in in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how that works. A lot of coke. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cocaine. And uh, nonfiction, I read Paddle Your Own Canoe by Nick Offerman. It's a really, oh, really good book. Yeah. I got one of his books on my list, too. Uh, we must like Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. And t- today I started a book called The World Engine. It's a Warhammer 40K book. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Necrons in it. Oh, uh, the Necrons have a Star Destroyer. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't really read that many books. Uh, I feel guilty. Grace is always like, you should read this, you should read that. I'm like, I don't read books. You should, man. I read the D&D too, books. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'll try to find Dune for cheap. I'll go to the half price books like just down the road from me and see if I can find it. Also, go through their Warhammer books, see if they have any good codexes. Oh yeah, but they're old. They're all like old. Yeah, I mean you can still get good ideas from so. If you see anything for the Tau and Farsight, let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know. Anyways. And <laughs> as a child growing up, I, I loved all the Golden books. Any of those were just spot on. Uh, oh, yeah. My Some favorite the was racist ones. My favorite oh, was yeah. Danny and the Dinosaur. <laughs> of course, I yeah. Oh well, yeah, Danny and the Di- that wasn't no, that wasn't Golden. That was uh. It was it? Was it? I think it is a golden book off, now. Offman. Yeah, they made it a golden book now. Okay. Well, who's Story the who? Book favorites or whatever. But yeah, Wait, it's I, a, the, it's the, a whoever book. wrote that also wrote Morris the Moose, and that was like my favorite growing up. Sid Hoff. Sid Hoff. Yeah. Yeah. Morris the Moose. I never heard that one. Like my mom read that one to me like every day. She was like, I want to read this one. And then like before I even knew how to read, I would like look at that book and like I, I knew the story so i just read it to myself oh yeah that's, that's how i got with danny and the dinosaur and a monster at the end of this book it's a sesame street book with grover in it yeah. i really loved that as a child oh, yeah. and make me yeah laugh a lot. we all know I bought that it for my niece long ago. i bought it for Perfect. grayson like the second great we found out that we were having a baby i was like i gotta buy this book for my baby uh and never ending story like, that was such a good book, and then I think my mom read it to me, like, four times as I was growing up. I love that book. What about you, Adrian? Uh, I started Dune this past week. Uh, 
I'm liking it. Uh, like I said before, it's there's a lot of it's it's pretty thick, so I'll have to like go through a paragraph and then go back again and read the paragraph. <laughs> Uh, but it, it it's it's getting interesting. I mean, it it hooks you like first chapter like, all right, something's going on. It's not just like set up, set up, set up, set up. Yeah. It's like there's shit going on like first chapter. Uh, <laughs> uh, those Dan Brown books, I never read them, but like <laughs> for some reason, every time I go to the airport, I'm like, oh, there's a Dan Brown book, like the Da Vinci Code. Like, oh, that that was popular like ten years ago. Yeah, I'll buy it. And then I'll, I'll open it in the book. I'll open it in the, on the plane. And I'm like, what am I doing? And Just I, like subliminal messages. Yeah, it's like a perfect like airport book. Yeah, and, Illuminati. Yeah, that's how they get you. It's not really a reading book, but I have the the Zelda art book. They made the they made the three books. There's the red one. That's the art book. The blue one is the encyclopedia, and the green one is Hyrule Historia. Yeah. Uh, I want to get all three, but I only have the, the art one right now. Uh, the comic book store I go to a lot has, like, all three of them in a collection, and it looks like the original NES cartridge, and they're all gold. I really what? want that one. Yeah, like, you know how the original NES cartridge was gold, and it had, like, the black sleeve? Yeah. Yeah, the comic book I go to has all three of them in, like, one big book, and it's in... Oh. Yeah, and it goes into that black sleeve. Wow. So Adrian is jerking <laughs> off in here right now. Don't look at it. Don't put a rose in it. <laughs> <laughs> Needles uh, everywhere. Don't worry, I'll take the thorns out. No thorns. Something like thorns are the best part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we I cook a lot. I I love cooking. Um, so we have like a ton of like cookbooks. Uh, salt, fat, acid, heat. That's a good book. She has. I forgot her name. The author but she has a like a little series on netflix that kind of breaks down that book I um, those all ingredients it's like you have to find like the balance of those to make like, a good meal i don't know look it up if you okay. don't want to read it read, it's on netflix uh alton brown's probably my favorite guy on cooking channel uh, he's got like an everyday cookbook that i have like a ton of recipes that i go back to nothing like elaborate but like a lot of like just kind of basics you can just get from that book uh, a few years ago, I was huge into, like, craft beer and brewing and home brewing, so I have, like, a ton of brewing books. Uh, if you have any questions on brewing, I can give you an answer. I have a lot of, like, bar books, like, for recipes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was a bartender, so I have a ton of those books, too. Uh, there's this one book I have. I read it a couple of years ago. Um, the Science of Superheroes. It kind of shows you, like, oh, Superman did this with his laser eyes? Well, it's going to take this much energy. And, like, well, how can we have this kind of energy? Well, maybe he eats this much food to create this much energy. He eats his power from our red sun. No, science. It's it's photosynthesis. <laughs> and then there's, like, it kind of goes with the science of, like, uh, how Ant-Man, if he grows, if he gets that big, it's like the inverse squared rule where yeah his bones would like yeah his, his bones would shatter mm-hmm. uh, and it just kind of goes with like the science of that kind of stuff uh, Les Stroud the Survivor Man on Discovery Channel he has a, a book called Survive it's a ton of like tactics and skills to learn how to survive out in the wild you know how to start a fire in the snow or or like out at sea how to you know what plants are good at this year, time of year and this environment don't wipe your ass with poison ivy (laughs) yeah or the gimpy gimpy what you don't know about the gimpy gimpy no jason do you know about the gimpy gimpy i do not know about the gimpy gimpy i'm scared to ask you about anything nowadays (laughs) after this podcast you just need to look it up like the the gimpy gimpy is basically this plant that has like these little fibers on it and if you get them like on you at all they like embed in your skin and they oh, yeah. like hurt so bad that you'll like kill yourself. I think they're in. It's in Florida. Uh, I know they're in Australia. Surprise, surprise. Mm. But like horses have like brushed up against it and like ran off the side of a cliff. Yeah, that, and that, like that's madness. familiar. And like people have like killed themselves because of how bad it hurts. Some guy like wiped his ass. Yeah, never, some guy yeah. wiped his ass with it and was like, 
he couldn't take the pain, so he just killed himself. Yeah, like it's brutal, and it like stays with you, and it causes like nerve damage, and it's just like so. It's like the what is that one uh, jellyfish, like the box worse. jellyfish have plants. Yeah, it's worse. Ugh. Like look it up, Gimpy Gimpy. I think it's G Y M P I E like twice. Gimpy Gimpy. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, we're talking about like survival guide, and I'm like, oh, I like the zombie hand, like zombie survival guide. That's a good book. Yeah, the A to Z or whatever. Yeah, it's just oh, no zombie survival. Uh, like Mac, Max, Max Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, that's good. The Shaolin spade or whatever was the ultimate like weapon. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, good clean fun is uh, like a woodworking book from Nick Offerman. Uh, that one's pretty good too. Got a lot of like woodworking stuff and just kind of like the Nick Offerman like philosophy. So it's it's funny. Uh, and then like the kid um, got her a bunch of kid cookbooks for Christmas and like a you know cutting like a knives and little cooking set. So you know that's, keep her involved. No. Uh, a B to J Z. It's like a picture book of like hip hop artists. So it's like A is for Akon. B is for Biggie Smalls. C it's for Coolio. Oh boy. So it's 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 <laughs> D it's is funny. for Drake. Uh yeah, I think it is Drake. It's not Dr. Dre? <gasps> no, D is Dr. Dre, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta uh, be Yeah. W's gotta be Wu Tang. E's gotta be M and M. E no, M is um Marshall Mathers is M. E is E C E. That's real healthy. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want this book now. <laughs> I think I have a Destiny one, like Destiny, like Alphabet. Uh, of course, we got Charlotte's Web. Yeah. It's it's there. It's we haven't read it or opened Some it. Some pig. But uh, she'll read it one day. Okay. And then we have a uh, Pedro and Donkey Land. It's slightly racist. Slightly. It's very racist. It was actually written by Carrie's great grandmother. Yeah, she had a book published called Pedro and Donkey Land. It's like code for Mexico. And yeah, there's like a lot of like racist. Uh... What the? <laughs> it's like a, I just like try a... to Google this and it doesn't. It's not make hard. Sense. It's not a hard racist, but it's like the 19. It's like the early Disney kind of racist. So pretty freaking racist. Yeah, it, it's yeah, racist. It's pretty racist. But it's not like, like it's like Pinocchio racist. Oh, oh, Shell Silverstein, A Light in the Attic, and oh, the yeah, yeah. ends. Man, we well, got that book too. God, I love those books. So. And uh, yeah, what's Where the, the wild other things are? are? Wild things are. Oh, it's not, that's not him, but like that's yeah. what that reminded yeah. me of. Maury Yes. Oh, that's yeah. another good book. Yeah. Yeah, those are. Those are oh, the it's books not surprised neither you. Hmm? I'm surprised we didn't mention uh, Ernest Klein. Ready yeah. Player oh one. yeah. Ready Player One and Armada. Yeah, those are good books. Good books. I had a fun time reading them. That's... No, I never saw that movie. I never saw the movie either, but... I the like movie's it. good. Yeah. Don't compare it to the book, and the, the movie's very enjoyable. It's Steven Spielberg, like, charm 100%. So, I feel like I need to mention this. It's not something I'm into or really have read, but Harry Potter, like, my wife... Yes, I know your wife too. My Jason. wife too. God I fucking loves it, dude. I've never seen it. I've never read it. I I, have zero interest. You should watch them. They're good. I kind of want to. I kind of want to read the books just because I think it would be a nice thing to like do for her and like enjoy it as well, so I could like have more the... insight into it. You know, like. Yeah. So. Um. But yeah, she we'll loves do that her. at the same time, Ryan. We'll just read Harry Potter at the same time. I'm down for that. I think that'd be cool. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I gotta read Doom um, first, so. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be a while. I gotta um, learn how to read first, actually. So my my daughter reads a lot. My wife does too. My wife reads a lot. Like she doesn't try to read anything like too heavy now. Like just with work and life and school and everything, like just crazy. Uh, so she reads a lot of like young adult fiction, where it's like Twilight. No, I think she read that when it like came out and like fucking hated it. I read Twilight. Someone like told her to read to, like Fifty Shades of Grey, and she got through like three pages, and I'm like, "This is bullshit! Like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever read." I like Hunger Games. Yeah, she read those. Like, that's what I'm saying. She reads like those kind of like 
those kind of books. So, Maze Runner. Um, uh, I don't know if she read that or not. I, I, I can't remember. Uh, but my daughter reads a lot, and so I asked her, like, hey, what's your favorite book? And she goes, I don't know. I'm like, teens. Like, yeah, God, you're so... <laughs> I don't even know who she is yet. Um, But she, like, her two favorite books I know for sure are The Hate You Give and The Girl in the Blue Dress. So... And my son... What's The Hate You Give? I've heard that. The Hate You Give is uh, based on... Like, the title is from a... A Tupac song, I believe, which is Thug, like The Hate You Give. And it's just, um, God, I can't remember what it's about, but it's it's a really good book. Like, my wife read it and really enjoyed it. And The Girl in the Blue Dress, like, my, my daughter likes realistic fiction. Like, she's read a lot of, I know she reads, like, a lot of stuff from, like, based around in World War II or whatever. I'm like, The Girl in the Blue Dress is about, like, that, that era and everything. And my son likes the Boxcar Children. He's been reading those. Okay. Or having them read to him, you know, back and forth, because they have trains in them. So, and if you've been here since like the first <laughs> episode or second episode, uh, my son is a huge train nerd. He, fuck yeah, trains, trains, <laughs> trailer park boys. Yeah. Who here came for fucking trains? <laughs> uh, fuck <laughs> yeah. Um, and he really likes Dogman. Uh, it's by the same guy who did like Captain Underpants. He's never really gotten to Captain Underpants, but he likes Dog I like Man. Captain Underpants. Is he related to Dog Cow? No. Oh, no. What is, what uh, Hank the like, Cow Dog? A lot of like uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I'm going to read him or get him to read Hank the Cow Dog. I think he'll love it. But yeah. Also, hey, as a kid, uh, Wayside School. You want to read those? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Wayside Stories. Saturday and I'm like, Sunday. what was it? Maxie, Rosie, and Earl, Partners in Grime? You or. Scary stories to tell in the dark. How about those? Ooh, oh, I remember that one, dude. Those man, those the were not, no bueno, dude. Like those scared me so bad. <laughs> Just like the covers kind of creepy as a kid. Like I remember like getting one of those and like bringing it home and then like because my friend was like, oh, you should check this book out. And I like opened it. I was like, nope. Like shut the book back. And was like, what the fuck did I just look at? Um, but yeah, like I, I'm. I mean, I like that my you know my family reads a lot. I don't read as much as I used to or I would like to. Like um, the Roll Doll books back then. Oh, yeah. Roll Doll is so good. James and the was Giant. A spy? Yeah. He was like a. C- or no. You, uh, what was that? MI6? Yeah. It was either MI6 or MI5. I can't remember which one is like domestic and foreign. But he was a spy like during like World War II. Like, yeah. Him and Ian Fleming were like besties or something. Yeah. He was a badass. So, anyways, books. They're pretty read more good. books. So, read to your yeah. kids. Read to your kids. Yeah, read to your kids. Put that in there. You know, it's it's a. I, I remember my parents reading with me, and I, I loved it. it. It's, you know, it's a good thing to do. I try to read to Grace, and he tries to eat the book. Yeah, I mean, if but you don't like, have kids. Read to someone else's kid. Yeah, read to the kid in your head. Oh. Or all to child. The child heart. within. <laughs> oh. So, uh, coming up, Adrian and I did a thing. We guested on our wife's podcast that they have called Sense and Senselessness. It is about everyday life and mental health. And they did an episode on marriage and we pros and cons of, <laughs> I wouldn't really say cons. <laughs> no, Just... Or I wouldn't really say pros. <laughs> uh, it's cool. Your wife doesn't listen oh, to this. Oh, Lord. Uh, my wife will listen to it and tell your wife, but, you know. Uh, my um, wife listens to us. Hi, Grace. Hi, Kelly. Carrie, you suck. You're not going to hear this. <laughs> but, we, yeah, we're, we're doing an episode with them. It was a really fun, like, honest, open, funny, difficult, like, conversations that we had about marriage and mental health and stuff so it was, it was really fun you should listen to that for sure and listen to the podcast it's good stuff i like i like both of those women they're they're fun they're neat they're all right yeah. my wife doesn't have a podcast i mean not yet Who knows? Yeah, she'll, she'll start one about law school yeah hey blah blah laws blah blog yeah blah blah, 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 blah laws blah, blah blog yeah <laughs> anyways that's about it yeah let's Wrap it up. Hey, what's your favorite book? Who? Why are you talking? The listener. Oh. oh. 
the, yeah. the single, the single listener, the single guy from the Netherlands. Actually, that disappeared off our map. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Fuck the Netherlands. Um, He's tearing them off. You know, Netherlands, you're on Scorsese list. Um, no, but I kind of like the Netherlands. No, me too. I, I just, I'm kidding. I love you, uh, Netherlands. But yeah, but yeah. Hey, let us know what your email us. Let are. us know what was your favorite book. Like Instagram it, tweet it, all that, and they can email us where. Next gen retro man at gmail dot com, and then where can, they, where can they tweet it? Next gen retro man with the at in front of it. Oh, yeah, you uh, messed that one up. Next gen retro man on the Instagram, the yeah, Facebook, Facebook dot com, the next gen just next gen retro man, and then like any platform or whatever they're called. And yeah, we're either it's, on it's there probably or one or of those. Not. Yeah, we're but not yeah. on Sega Genesis. No, I was never a Genesis guy. That's the thing with the Sonic movie. Like, I was never into Sonic all that much. Yeah, it was alright. Anyway. Books! Books! Books!